Hey, my name is Justin, and today I'm taking you on a tour of my budget home music studio. This is not gonna be the most impressive home music studio you've seen on YouTube by any stretch of the imagination, but it's functional and cost efficient. And honestly, it's served me really well since college, which was like, eight years ago? Ugh, I'm getting old. My primary occupation is a guitarist and music director, but I have also been more heavily involved with music production and a little bit of audio engineering, and I'm hopeful to be a YouTuber one day, so you know, there's that too. So I've crafted my gear purchases to make sense with those fields of music. I've always been a budget conscious guy, but I truthfully don't feel like I've had to compromise very much in the area of quality with the things I have. So this video goes out to everyone else out there who isn't sure they can get quality results at home at a reasonable price. I feel like I've done it here. Let's take a look. Here's the room overall. I'm really lucky to live in a two bedroom condo with my wife and I'm extra lucky that she gave me the second room for my purposes. Made to win. As you can probably tell from this shot is a little on the small side. It's a very narrow rectangle and it has two windows as you can see behind me that are a little awkwardly placed. But believe me, having those two windows right there is a blessing in disguise because if this room had no windows, I would be depressed and I would just give up. The couch and table are actually purchases for a living room. That's what I used when it was just me in here. They've since moved up here, so I'm not gonna include that in the overall price just because those are repurposed pieces of furniture. In this corner of the room, I have a guitar rack I purchased from Amazon, and it's a nine space rack, and it was only $73. It's actually really nice quality. I'll put a link to it and the other gear we talk about today in the description down below. I have spaced out the guitars that I use all here. The only thing I'm missing is my bass, which lives in the closet downstairs and my Gibson SG, which I haven't touched since high school. I put my guitars in alphabetical order by brand because that just seemed like the right thing to do. The Fender Stratocaster, this is a Mexi Strat. I think it's a 2005, something like that. Then I have my Fender Telecaster. This is a custom build guitar. And then the baby of all my babies is my 2008 Gibson Les Paul Standard. Then I have my Gretsch White Falcon center block double cutaway guitar. Finally, I have a Martin. I think it's called a Custom X. I'm not really sure. It's one of their cheap line entry-level acoustic guitars. It actually sounds great and it has a pickup in it, which is perfect for live. So let's head over to the desk. The desk is actually an Ikea tabletop and it's one of those tabletop under frames that's supporting it. I'm pretty sure the tabletop, you could get something very similar from Ikea today for like 60 bucks. And it seems like the same sort of table legs that I had from before is about $190. The second level of the desk is just a shelf that I purchased by itself. Brings my monitors up closer to ear level, which makes it a little bit easier for mixing purposes. And I think it also just kind of makes the desk look a little cooler or more legit. I think it's around $20 and then has four different legs. Each were probably five bucks. So if you're looking at 40 bucks to add the second level to the desk, 290 bucks for a usable desk. Next to the desk is just a $40 shelving unit I got at Ikea. While it does exist to keep cables off the floor, there are inevitably cables on the floor at all times. Now that you've seen the room, let's look at the pieces of gear that make it function. My audio interface is an Apogee Duet 2. It's a two in, four out interface. I remember when I first bought this, I plugged my computer in through it and heard my music on my monitors and it was as if I was hearing music for the first time. The stereo spectrum felt much less like left and right and more like a three dimensional image. When I added reverb to something, it felt like it was pushing it back and obviously the mic pre's on Apogee products are really great. I very professionally hang the input jacks off the side of my desk because I leave my pedal board in front of the desk so I can very easily plug in the outputs of my pedal board into the duet and just start recording whenever I'm working on an arrangement or a guitar recording or video whatever it may be. I think Apogee is on the duet 3 now and it looks like you can get one of those for about 650 bucks which is less money than I paid for the duet. My monitors are Yamaha HS5s. I remember being a student at USC and my recording professor is telling us that the Yamaha NS10s were the greatest monitoring speaker ever. HS5s were in the Yamaha family, so I figured they must be similar. And this is what I could afford at the time. It was about $200 per speaker, so $400 for the set, which is pretty reasonable. I think especially for the quality, I really love the way these sound. They get the job done and I'm familiar with them. And if you've been doing any sort of audio engineering, then you know that's a lot of the battle is learning your speaker and getting familiar with how different mixes and things sound on them. My computer monitor is a 25 inch LED HP monitor. 
It looks like I still haven't taken the sticker off this thing from eight years ago. Seems like you could get a comparable monitor, probably a better one for like 130 bucks. I wanted to get a monitor because I was pretty tired of just working on my 13 inch MacBook Pro at the time. When you're doing a mixing project and you're constantly closing windows and opening them, it can get frustrating. This allows me to do a dual screen setup so I can throw up maybe my mix window on the bottom or the plugins I'm operating on the bottom and then have the session up here. My keyboard is is a Novation Launch Key 49. I got it because it was reasonably priced and I liked that it had pads on it, which I thought I was gonna use a ton and I'll be honest, I like never use them. They do look really cool when your computer turns on though. Looks like these go for $229 now. I think that's more money than I paid when I got it. Either way, that's still a reasonable price. These things are a workhorse. I've had it for a long time. It's traveled with me on the road, on tour, and I haven't had any issues, so they're definitely built really well. I think if you're a piano player, you probably wanna invest in something nicer with weighted keys, but I don't do a lot of piano, and I'm mainly doing this for drums and a little bit of synth and key programming here and there, so this works perfect for me. Next up is my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is a pretty souped up machine back when I got it. It has 16 gigs of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and it had the, at the time, new Intel 8 core i9 processor. And it's actually worked out great for me. I think Ableton performs a little better on these Intel i9 processors than it does on the M chips currently, but I could also just be in my head. I've been really lucky and I haven't had too many glitches with Ableton on this machine. I really don't remember how much it was, but my guess is at the time it was probably like $2,300, $2,400. This is the one place I'd say definitely spend the most money that makes sense for you because if your computer sucks, you're not gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a slow process recording. It might be a glitchy process recording. For the type of music I'm involved with, as well as the fact that I am primarily a guitarist, usually the only live instrument I'm having to record is guitar. I used to mic up my amp and do that whole bit and that's why I have an SM57. This thing will run you like $100. I think it actually sounds great on guitar. It sounds decent on acoustic guitar and it can even be used as a vocal mic. But then again, I don't record my amp very often. So if you're one of those people who only has a modeler or uses modeling or some sort of plug-in situation to do most of your guitar recording, you may not even need this. My second mic I'm actually holding in my hand and is recording the audio for this video right now. So if the audio gets a little wonky in here, I'm sorry. This is the SC2200. This is a condenser microphone. It actually sounds really great. It's crystal clear. It's awesome on vocals. It's awesome on acoustic guitar. It's just a good all around microphone and it's really reasonably priced. It's 250 bucks, but it does not sound like a $250 microphone. I don't really have any complaints about it. I think it's great value. And there you have it, my home studio set up for under $5,000. And I know $5,000 is not a tiny sum of money, but to include the computer in that amount and everything else, that's a really good deal. There are two things I don't like about this space. Number one is the lack of organization. I'm a really organized person and this has bothered me for a long time. Time, I am going to be taking some steps to upgrade the organization of this space. And then number two, the aesthetic. It's really boring in here. It's just a gray box with music gear. So in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be focusing on upgrading this space to make it more aesthetically pleasing and hopefully more fun and light and enjoyable to create in here and shoot videos in here. So be sure to subscribe to see how we upgrade this space. And if you enjoyed this video today, be sure to like it and leave a comment before you head out and I'll catch you next time. The most important important factor, the studio dog loves it in here. Isn't that right, Bailey? Yeah, that's pretty good. It's my favorite room in the house.